The knockouts continue on MasterChef, the professionals. It started with 10 chefs in two groups of five. Last time, the first group delighted diners at the Royal Society of Medicine. This is a jolly good surprise. I'd like more of it. Please. However, for Zoe, the final challenge marked the end of her competition. Now, the second group must pull out all the stops, cooking at one of London's most exclusive addresses. This is a massive challenge for our chefs. It's going to be very interesting to see how they gel together. We're looking for team spirit, but I'm also looking for some flair. Only the best chefs can go through to the semi-finals. I think I've done a good job so far, but I'm not taking it for granted that I'm through. For me to get into semi-finals, it will be absolutely amazing. There's no one that I'm not worried about. I'm just going to work as hard as I can just to keep in the competition. I'm going out all guns blazing. It's going to be like the OK Corral in there, and I'll be the only one standing at the end, hopefully. Chefs, good to see you. What a fabulous opportunity cooking here at the French Ambassador's residence. We would like you to create a three course menu for the French Ambassador and her guests. The food in this house is at the highest level. This is a massive opportunity for you to shine as a team. Guys, you've got a lot of work ahead of you. We suggest you get moving. Just seeing that French flag hanging over the, the front door <laughs> just, just made us all a bit nervous when we were coming in. We've got a great mix of guys here in our team and uh, if we can all mix and match and come together and put up some fantastic food then boom, I think we've all got it in the bag. I can't wait now, I want to get in the kitchen and see what they've laid out for us, see what we've got to go with. The chefs only have 30 minutes to plan their three course menu. Their ingredients are selected from the finest produce from France, including pollock and mussels from Brittany, breast chicken, and a wide selection of fruit and vegetables. Do we want to go fish starter and fish starter, fish starter uh, chicken as the main course? If you poach it and then love the skin, that'll be nice. Yeah, I yeah. think we could make like a. A mussel bar blanc or something? The ingredients look fantastic. We are the only ones who can go wrong now. If we don't use them properly, then it's all on us. It's not, a, it's not the ingredients' fault, it's our fault. So the main course is going to go chicken. Poached cheese to keep it moist, and then you take them off the carcass. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you want to do a little pativia with the leg meat? Yeah. yeah. For me personally, this is probably the biggest thing that I've ever done in my career so far. I am nervous, but I'm not going to let those nerves get to me and ruin my day. I think we've got enough time to see if we do like a fondant. As long as you guys have recipes for it. Yeah, because I'm... I've I'm got a recipe. 125, 125, 153 eggs and 35 grams of flour. Do you want to do pastry now? That's off his head, so you're happy taking pastry control now. of that, yeah? Fine. Right. I really like the way our chefs are talking at the moment. They're all having a, a say and input on and how the menu should come together. Yeah. Like frosted hazelnuts or...? This is the first time you can have a service where you're actually working together in a professional kitchen and with some very serious guest upstairs as well. The one thing we do have to be very aware of, you know, chefs, is being absolutely on the bottom for our timings. They now have just two hours prep time before their first course is served. The brigade is made up of Ellie, a junior sous chef, Gary, a college lecturer, and sous chefs James and Brenton and Max, head chef of a gastro pub. I don't think there's any sort of big egos in the group. And, you know, we, we've separated the kitchen up. Uh, so we've got two on starter, two on mains, one on dessert. Um, but no, I think it's, it's, it's a good, good kitchen to be working in today. Take your time with that. 
The first job for Max is to carefully fillet and portion the pollock for the starter. You all right? Yeah, fine. Man. If you, if you make it taut this way, if you bend it, what it does is it firms this up, OK? That's a great tip, Mom. Thank you very much. I learned something. I did learn something. James is also on the first course. He makes a start prepping the garnish of broad beans and tomato con cas. It's nice to be working as a team for once instead of just going solo, so it's going to be nice to see what comes together. How are you doing, James? Yeah, very well, thank you, Chef. You quite happy with this so far? Yeah, I'm taking my time. I'm making sure everything's done right. Obviously, I'm not taking too much time to do it No, as well. you can't take too much no, time. No, You're the first course up. We are. If we can't be late either. <laughs> the menu seems very straightforward. They're taking the, the pollock, what you poach, and they crispy up some skin. They're going to make a beurre blanc, possibly some sea veg to go with that. It's a nice-sounding menu. That's a good size portion. Yeah, don't want any bigger. Don't want to go much bigger than that. No, because you've got your beurre blanc and your mussels on exactly. On the main course with Brenton is Ellie, who is prepping three different cauliflower garnishes. Right, Ellie, where are you up to? So I've got the pickled uh, cauliflower done. I'm going to caramelise these at the end. I've made my puree, and then I'm going to jump on and help uh, Brenton. How do you feel about your involvement on the menu? Do you feel like you've had enough input? Yeah, I think so. Um, everyone's had a certain input on all of the dishes. I've got a funny feeling you're going to be controlling these four chefs around you in about oh. an hour from now. Is that about right? <laughs> Uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> probably, not as much. OK. Right, you happy with that? Little, just for like three? Yeah. I'm liking the way they're talking at the moment. Ellie's really getting vocal in there, which I think is great. You right, Brenton? Yeah. So far, so good. The main course is a chicken from breast, which they're going to poach and then roast. Uh, and they're also using the leg meat to make a bativier, which is like a little pie. For me, this sounds like a great main course. Brenton is butchering the breast chickens, a world-renowned breed, famous for its rich flavour and reared only in eastern France. I've worked in France before and I've seen some of the stunning food that they have in their average restaurant. Yeah, we're going to have some pressure to cook up something to impress them. Right, but for the chicken, the poached yeah. chicken... We're going to just do water on the stove, mirepoix and thyme, carrots. To keep the chicken as moist as possible, Brenton and Ellie are poaching the breasts on the crown in a classic French mirepoix vegetable stock. We know Ellie can cook the chicken very well. We've seen her do it this way a few times now in, in the kitchen, so it's in good hands. The bones and trimmings are being sautéed to add flavour to the chicken jus, and the leg meat used to create the filling for the pativier, a traditional French pie. Right, Brenta, where are we at? Uh, at the moment, I'm just starting to make the mix for the pativier, the little uh, chicken leg pie. So in that, I'm going to sweat down some onions, a bit of garlic, mousse on mushrooms. Are you excited about the challenge? I'm working with Ellie here as yeah, a team. Yeah, I'm, I'm working with Ellie. She's a great chef. I'm quite excited about the challenge, but obviously uh, now I'm getting a bit nervous. Uh, time's flying by very quickly. It's trying to find our way around a new kitchen. Um, yeah, there's a lot going on. It's quite nerve-wracking. For me, this sounds a great main course. I love the pativier part of it. I hope it doesn't dry out. I hope the filling doesn't dry out. I've had a taste of the mix. It's delicious so far. Over in the pastry section, Gary has a strawberry ripple ice cream well underway. And he's made a praline to add an extra nutty flavor to his chocolate fondant mix. How confident do you feel about cooking a fondant? The recipe I definitely know. The, what I don't know is the oven, timings and size. So it's really going to come down to practice. Gary's next big task is his chocolate fondant mix. Equal quantities of butter and chocolate are blended with whisked eggs and sugar before finally adding flour and the ground up hazelnut praline. Gary, tell me where we are. We've got our fondant mix ready. Um, just going to leave that at room temperature. We've got the base done from our chocolate twills. 
I'm just starting the nut crumble, the, kind of the, the granola. There was some fruit you were going to use. Yeah, we've got, again, these amazing strawberries. So I've made a little kind of reduced puree and that's going to be for our ice cream. I'm really impressed on how controlled you are. You've got so much work done already. Thank you. I think the team did well by putting you in here. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure there. No pressure. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah, thank you. The dessert for me is in great hands. Gary has got beautiful little textures of chocolate here and there. There's nuts, he's taking the strawberries, and there's our ice cream. He's got a lot of work. I dropped in on him. He seems so in control. He knows exactly where he's at. I wouldn't be surprised if we see him coming and, and giving these guys a hand later on. But so far, I like the way our team is working in this kitchen. I think there's a great atmosphere at the moment, and I think there's definitely a level of unity with these five chefs. They've come together very, very well. Chefs, one hour has gone. You have one hour left before your first course is due. We oui, chef. Built in 1840, and initially the home of the 10th Duke of Marlborough, the ambassador's residence was bought by the French government in 1946. Well, I'm representing my government in uh, many fields, uh, security, defense, economy, culture, gastronomy as well. French cuisine is obviously one of the best and it is uh, recognized as so. It's part really of our DNA and uh, uh, our culture. I think there's a lot of pressure on the chefs and today is very important, but I hope it will be a great success. Can I just make a suggestion? You're 50 minutes away from your first course. I think it may be a good idea to just have a quick conversation of where everybody is right now. Should we go through to Gary quickly? Yeah. yeah. Should we, should we go Don't you to think? Gary? So starter-wise, what are starters, we Starters. The pollock is portioned. You're poaching it, yeah, in the water bath. If I'm honest with you, I've not done that before, so I'm not going to start as long as you know what you're, now. Yeah, as long as it comes out nice. You happy with poaching yeah, in the liquor? Yeah, old school, man. Yeah, old school. Sauce, you need to finish, like, yeah. now. I'll and then um, florets, I'm going to start cooking roughly about 20 past. Right. Sweet, Gary. Uh, fun the mix is done. We've got chocolate trail, which I'm going to blitz and then dust over these and get little really thin wafers. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I think it's going to come together really well because those strawberries are stunning. Sweet. Team. Awesome. Yeah, that's great. Team. Woo! Let's go. Team Brim. In preparation for service, James is blanching three different varieties of sea vegetables to accompany the yeah. pollock. That's the only stuff that concerns me. I think I'd better leave that off. No. It's like eating plastic and get rid of it. No. Take it off. We'll just, just do the nori. Do the nori and the sand fire. Because that, that's actually yeah. quite tasty. Once that's seasoned on, get rid of it. What are you doing with the mussels? And we're going to uh, steam them open and then we're going to use the liquor to go through the beurre blanc at the end. A beurre blanc is a classic French butter sauce. It's got a reduction of shallots and herbs with a hint of white wine vinegar or a little bit of lemon juice. So when we've got the sauce, get the fish stock into it, just intensify that. Blitz it up, strain that in a minute, put it in there, start getting the butter into it. We're just getting the final pieces together, just getting it all ready, so it's all ready to plate. I'm personally just finishing the sauce. Uh, Max is just doing the last few bits of garnish. And then all it's going to be then is just getting everything cooked, seasoned, tasted, dressed and on the plate, ready to rock and roll. We're sort of, we're discussing everything as we go along. We're all sort of talking stuff through. If someone's not happy, we'll talk it out. I don't know about you, but I would put a bit, bit more butter through that, just to, yeah, yeah just put literally on, on here. Yeah, because it is just, a, it's a bit sharp, I think. It just seems a little bit tart, that's all. Let me taste that. That's just a bit sharp for me. It's a bit vinegary, isn't it? Yeah, it's a bit tart. You need a touch of sugar in now. Yeah, I'll get you some. Sugar in a beurre blanc? Yeah. Sugar in a beurre blanc? Yes. Really? Yes. I've been taught that, just to give it a little extra sweetness, and then it will right, then. all come together nicely. Start. Can I have the pass over the fish, please? Personally, for me, it's still sharp, but at the end of the day, it's not all about me. Back on the main course, the chicken breasts are poached. Yeah, 
that's all right. Yeah. So Ellie and Brenton have both turned their attention to the chicken pativier. Pativier is a French pastry that's defined by its, its shape and its markings. I would like that to have had detail in the scoring. I would love that to be a shiny and stand out. You want it to almost be like the jewel in the crown of the dish. Brenton is making the filling. The mixture of chicken thigh meat, pancetta and mushroom is wrapped in charred leaf and placed in a mold to create the perfect dome. On the other side of the kitchen, Ellie is rolling the puff pastry for the pativier, traditionally decorated with ornate scoring. You're going old school, so you're not using all the modern fashion cooking, like water baths, etc. It's like old classic cooking, and it's like showing how good a chef you are, really, I think. The base of the pie must be perfectly sealed, but the steam inside must also be allowed to escape to stop the pie from bursting open when baked. You put the disc on the top, and you put a little hole in it, that creates the steam. And then it won't break apart, because it might split open, no? Or might I've just... never had that problem. All right, that's fine, I mean... then. All right, we'll do your way, then. <laughs> whoa, 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 not like that. Just no, no, it's fine. I don't mind. We're thinking of more of the decorations, so we didn't want to um, destroy the decorations, so we're going to go with um, no disc. Different experiences in the past lead to different uh, methods of cookery, basically. I think it's going to be really tasty, really, really flavoursome. Um, yeah, as long as we cook it all properly just as we're serving it, it will come out nice. Yeah. Chicken's good, is OK? Yeah, we just need to pan roast the chicken, uh, cook the florets, caramelise them up, and uh, pativiers we need to place in the oven and sauces made, so we know Have the pativiers been uh, egg washed? Yes. Do you have any spare? No. No. So you can't put a tester in now? No. OK. That'll be good. I have faith. Meanwhile, Gary is adding to the garnish of his dish by making some chocolate caramel discs. I've probably not done pastry in a restaurant for about 25 years, so um, to be standing here in this particular moment in time and on the pastry is um, fun. Pastry's not feeding people, pastry's about that little element of luxury and surprise, and that's what I enjoy about it. With time to spare, Gary has decided to test the cooking time of his fondant. If they're baked for too long, they won't have the all-important oozing chocolate center. So it's a six-minute fondant, not an eight. <laughs> I'm sure the French ambassadors had uh, some of the best chefs in the world cooker chocolate fondant. They just want to make it memorable. With service fast approaching, the guests arrive. They include Maxime Holder, head of global French bakery, Paul. Florence Gomez from the French Chamber of Commerce. Journalist Marc Roche. Gilles Quillot, the ambassador's chef de cuisine. And TV and radio journalist Benedict Pavio. They say the chemistry between politicians can really change a negotiation. I'm sure food has its part <laughs> to play in good relations. I think it's very important when you have international conferences, if the buffet is good and dinners are good, it's, uh, people are in a better mood to yeah, negotiate. Yeah, yeah. 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 Just want to let you know you've got half an hour for your first course, OK? The guests are here, they're having their champagne. 7.30, first course out. Yes, Mark. Oui, chef. For Max and James, Timing the poaching of their fish is critical. So how long before we start plating? Uh, about two minutes. We will start by poach pollock loin, mussels, some fire, seaweed, and mussels, burglon. Everything smells of Brittany. Mm -hmm. And I love the idea. 
Matt, should that fish be boiling? No. No, I'll just turn it down. Turn it off. I think it's going to be very interesting to see the way uh, the pollock is poached, because this is not that easy. Mm, I think we're about done. I don't know about you, but I'm getting a little bit peckish. <laughs> OK, guys, you've got five minutes left. We oui, chef. Dish leaves the kitchen in five, OK? We oui, chef. Around the outside, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful, guys. Very, very nice. There's nothing going in those shells? No, they're just decorations here. Off, on. We've got time, put some mussels in there. Grab a spoon, put some mussels on. Is every plate consistent? Yeah, that's what I'm just looking at. All right, guys, you happy? Yes, yes, yep. sir. Yeah, I'm good. Yep. We've got thyme and garlic and everything. Yeah. All right, mate. All right. All right, dude. That was a challenge. Yeah. Ooh, right then. Next. The starter is poached pollock topped with crispy skin, a mussel beurre blanc, broad beans, tomato con casse, and sea vegetables. Looked exactly how I thought yeah. it was going to look. Um, and taste wise, I think it's great. I think we've got what we set out to do, so. Yeah. yeah. Let's hope the guests are happy. Yeah, that's the main thing, isn't it? The colours, they're very nice. I think it's quite attractive. And the smell is really delicious. So I think we should try. It smells nice. The fish is a bit dry, but I think the, the sauce or the beurre blanc is very tasty. And I like it with the seaweed and some fire. What I really like is the texture of the skin of the fish that's on top. The flavour of the mussel beurre blanc is great, but I'm a bit surprised because for me the texture of the, of the fish, it's, uh, it's a bit dry. I would like to have tasted a little bit more mussel flavour going through this sauce. The beurre blanc has got the sharpness so, uh, from, from the lemon juice coming through it, um, and, and the, the sea vegetables with the seaweed you know, brings that saltiness to it. It's a good dish. Nice colour on them, bad boys. Next in the spotlight are Ellie and Brenton with the chicken main course. You're 20 minutes away. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, we got everything under control. Yeah, we. The pativiers take 15 minutes to cook. Without any testers and no spares, it is essential that they all are cooked perfectly. That's it, butter, garlic. Yeah, garlic and thyme is here. Yeah. Right, take them off now. It's very interesting to have a chicken pitivier because it's actually technically it's really hard uh, because he wants to have the puff pastry perfectly cooked and also the chicken not overcooked. Where are we at with the pitivier? Yeah, literally in 30 seconds. It's a big challenge and uh, lots of pressure because it's going to be a very French dish with French people around the table. The fact that they're in the Residence de France. <laughs> absolutely no pressure whatsoever. <laughs> is that it now? That's it now. Let's, let's do this. Oh, dear. Tastes just nice and crisp, though. They are right? They have split a little bit on the bottom on the sides. So, I mean, once the pressure has subsided, they will uh, flatten out a little bit. But, yeah, it's not ideal. Chicken Bye -bye, the other yeah. side, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sylvia in the corner. We're getting there, guys. Yes, chef. Yes. Happy? Yes, chef. You send them? Yes. Yes. Service, please. Service. The flavours are there. Yeah. I believe the flavours the are there. The puree and the collie, that's what yeah. we wanted to do, and the chard, yeah. giving that little crunch at the end. I mean, but inside yeah. the pativier, the flavour, that's what, that's what we wanted. Mm. So, okay. overall, happy. Yeah. All right.
For the main course, they have served poached and roasted breast of chicken, braised charred stems, a chicken, pancetta and mushroom pativier, roasted and pickled cauliflower, cauliflower puree, and a chicken jus. It's superbly well uh, presented. It's like a painting. Yes. I really like the chicken. I think it's, the way it's cooked, I think is really, really good as well. The pitivier was great. Yeah, it's one of the best yes. pitivier yeah. I've had. The flavor that you had inside was really great and mm -hmm. it was linked with the rest of the dish. It was like a little bombshell of taste. Exactly. It was quite surprising, wasn't it? And I ate it too quickly, it was so good. No. <laughs> well, you enjoyed it. I enjoyed it tremendously. You've got a lovely sauce. Petivier is nice and moist. The chard is beautifully cooked. It's a crowd pleaser. You put this up, people will be happy to eat it. Do you want the strawberries on a day class? Service is almost at an end. But for Gary, there is one notoriously challenging task to overcome. He must now cook seven chocolate fondants to perfection. Right, so I think in two minutes, first tray of fondants going in. When it hits three minutes, we'll put the second tray in back up, right. just to make sure. There's going to be a spare on each tray, so if the first one comes out and it collapses, I'll just pop them back in. You've got ten minutes for service, Gary. You're going to be yes, OK? Sir. Yep, perfect. This is the most complicated fondant cooking I've ever witnessed. While the fondants are cooking, the team start assembling the rest of the dish as once the hot fondant and the cold ice cream are plated, the dessert will need to be served immediately. The bit I'm looking forward to is the uh, praliné chocolat fondant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they need to rest a little bit longer. 30 seconds. Rest a little bit. I don't know. I don't know. Sorry, guys, I'm going to need another minute. Not ready. How long we got, Gary? One minute. They're now waiting. So you've got no spare ones, have you, right now on this tray? No. So if one breaks. Gentle, come on. I think we're going to need that second lot. You all right? Well done. Group hug? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good <in>. Boy. <laughs> Gary. Yeah, good. Tough. Good. Just glad I, I done the extra. Definitely need it. The dessert is a praline chocolate fondant served with almond granola, strawberry ripple ice cream, compressed strawberries, and chocolate caramel wafers. I love the design in the plate. It's very simple, very sober, very elegant. C'est magnifique. magnifique. And I just can't wait uh, just to see if it's uh, nice and liquid inside. Oh, that is perfect. <gasps> this is exactly how we like it. Mm. That's a real fondant. Mm. It's perfect. It's perfect. The pastry chef has been really clever because nothing is overwhelming, everything is going together and uh, we have a taste of strawberry, we get the taste of the chocolate, and it's perfect. This to me is delicious. The ice cream actually enhances the flavor of the chocolate fondant and the strawberries as well, and it works so well together. I loved it. 
It's perfectly cooked, and uh, so it's one of the best I've eaten. Mm. I love the ice cream. I think the ripple is really nice. It's got a lovely fruity flavour. The strawberries are, are carried through in the plate. And the fondant's really good. It's lovely and soft in the centre. Massive risk trying to take this dish on, but they've done it very, very well. This, for me, was, was really the star dish of the day. I think Gary's done a great job. Great to see the guys come around him and support him when he really needed it. They've done well. So thank you very much. It was a delicious meal and it was crescendo because we love the dessert. You're very brave uh, because offering such a traditional dish, uh, you know, to French guests is not that easy. And you did it great because the flavor was perfect. Congratulations and all the best for, for the future. Yeah. Tough. Hey, huh? Hey, love it. Tough one. Oh, oh, oh. Good stuff, guys. Good hug. Guys in the middle. The challenge today was to see our chefs work together as a team, and they showed that they can do that. This was never going to be easy. Our chefs have done us proud. It was fun, um, but it's <laughs> stressful. Very stressful. It's not every day you get to cook for the French ambassador, so yeah, it's good fun. Enjoyed it. It's been a really good team today, really good team. But it's back to normality now. There's one of us going to be going, and I don't want it to be me, so I've just got to cook better than these guys now. I can't wait to get back in and cook, to be honest. It's, it's almost like sadistic to say, but I actually really enjoy cooking in the MasterChef kitchen. And um, I think that would be the worst thing about not going through, is the fact that I wouldn't get to cook in there again. It means a lot if I can stay in the competition. We have worked so hard to be where we are today. It's exciting, and I, I love showing the judges what I can do. You've got to give everything and, and not hold anything back. To proceed, you get one chance. I came here with the mindset that I want to get through to the semi-finals at least. Now I want to go even further. Chefs, you're now cooking for a place in the semi-final. This needs to be something very, very special. You're going to have 90 minutes for your showstopper dish. At the end of this, one of you will be leaving the competition. Off you go. Brenton is a very creative chef. His food has been different, it's exciting, huge attention to detail. I'm really, really looking forward to seeing what he's going to cook for us today. I'm going in with the dessert today and it could make me or break me, really. If I can pull that off and have all my timings correct, it should be a fantastic dish. Brenton, what are you doing? Uh, so I'm doing a take on Bombalasco. It's my take. In the center, it's going to be uh, cherries with a cherry kind of sauce, yep. surrounded by a chocolate mousse, and then surrounded by an Italian meringue, blow-torched. As you, you cut into it, it's just going to ooze everywhere all over the plate, supplying a sauce to go with the financier that I'm serving with as well. Why this dish for your showstopper? If it goes according to plan, it's going to be a bit of a wow factor in front of you guys. Hopefully you're going to be looking at it going, I want to dive into that. So if I get that across to you, I think that's going to stop the show. That's what we want. We'll see. <laughs> a lot of different techniques going on here. Huge amounts of work that Brenton's given himself. He's got to temper chocolate to make the dome. He's got to make a chocolate mousse. He's got an Italian meringue to make. He's got financier cakes to make as well. He's really going for it today. This chef wants to be in the semi-final and good on him for pushing the boat out.
James is a really determined chef. When the pressure is on, you will see him fighting. This means everything to James. He came close to being knocked out of the competition. He means business and he's throwing everything at it. Tell us about your dish today. My dish today is venison. I'm doing it with uh, blackberry and beetroot. It's the main elements, but everything on the dish is purple. So I've named the dish. What's the name of the dish? Uh, it's frustration. <laughs> so purple is the colour of frustration. As a young chef, I was quite frustrated. So this is me getting that frustration out on the plate now. I've seen you cook when you've been determined, been put under pressure when it really counts and you've come out on top. That's what you need to do today with this dish. Yes, chef. Okay. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you very much. James has labelled his showstopper dish frustration. But if we look at what James is doing, the garnish here makes sense. He's got potatoes, beetroot, blackberries, things that go very well with a loin of venison. Visually, it's going to look very odd. A purple plate of food is not an appetising colour. And I'm just questioning the reason behind the whole thing. It just sounds a little bit silly to me. Can he make it work? Can this plate come together? I think it's going to be a real slog in the kitchen today. It's going to be a real fight getting through to that next stage. It's not going to be pretty and it's not going to be easy. I'm getting myself ready for that. I really am. Chefs, 45 minutes have gone. You have 45 minutes left. Max has given us some really solid cooking, some great tasting plates of food. Max is growing through the competition, cooking great food and working very hard on his presentation. came in as a pub chef, but to actually accomplish what I've accomplished and get this far, I'm amazed at myself. I'm doing a neck of lamb two ways, so I'm making a little shepherd's pie. Shepherd's pie? Yeah. And then with the other piece of neck, I'm going to do a very sort of quick sear. Confit garlic puree, uh, confit shallot, you've got baby onions and a little bit of butter. Um, you've got silver skinned onions, which I'm going to char. Um, we've got uh, baby leeks, which I'm going to blanch and then char. Um, uh, I think that's it. Do you know this dish? Yes. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. do? There's a, yeah, there's a lot, a lot going on on it. But if you're going to sit back for a semi-final place, then you might as well go home. So it's all guns blazing today. Yeah, you crack on. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Thank Max. you very much. Thank you. This is the type of cuisine that Max cooks every day very earthy, wintry dish. And it's almost the type of food that gives you a hug. I like the sounds of Max dish. It's something you'd order and you know you're going to enjoy it. What I like to see here is whether he's going to elevate this dish and make it look absolutely stunning. I'm really impressed with Gary's development in the competition. Gary is an all-rounder in the kitchen. He can cover any section. That makes him a very strong chef. He's one to watch. How are you, Gary? Good, thanks. Enjoying yeah. being back in our kitchen? Yeah. Feels like home now. Feels like home. <laughs> What's your showstopper dish? Homemade black pudding with scallops, in the Western Isles, they make a kind of oatmeal potato scone, which is cooked on a skillet. So it would cook on an open fire. I'm doing it a wee bit different. I'm going to bake it in between a couple of shells. So you've kind of got a little edible shell almost to eat with the dish. You've so been busy. It's been a busy 45 minutes, yeah. It's sort of watching you really grow in confidence and, and really enjoying this competition. It's been a great thing to see. You know, my, my main objective was uh, not to get put out for the first round. Is that, you know, going back to college, getting out in the first round would be tough. But I'm just absolutely loving it. Keep it up. No, oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Gary's trying quite a lot of new techniques, making fresh black pudding, apple spheres. He's made a little scone mix of biscuit to give us the the look of a scallop shell. 
There's also going to be a black pudding mayonnaise on the plate as well. I am really curious about Gary's dish. It's just how it's all going to come together. My dish might sound fairly simplistic and it's a, a, a classic combination of black pudding and the scallops, but the technical elements of this dish are terrifying. Chef's 30 minutes left. We have had some great food from Ellie throughout the competition. She is going from strength to strength. Ellie is definitely in this competition to win it. This is one determined chef. I'm doing a barrico pork two ace. I've got the brazen cheek in there. I've got a roasted rack loin in the oven. How are you finding the pressure in here? Um, yeah, I'm quite nervous today, actually. You seem nervous. Yeah, you, you don't look the bit. usual Ellie that I've seen. <laughs> you know what, Ellie, you need to believe in yourself. Do you think you can go further? I would love to go further. I would love to get into the next round, but there's a lot of good guys in this kitchen and we're all wanting the same achievement. If you cook to the standards you've been doing lately, <laughs> you wouldn't be going home. <laughs> good luck. You. Thanks very much. Good luck, Ellie. Ellie's cooking her two different types of pork. Pork cheek is being braised down in the pressure cooker. The loin she's left on the bone and she's roasting it gently in the oven. She's got a smoked potato puree that she's put inside, little potato crisp that she's made into spaghetti and deep fat fried. I love the sound of this dish. I can't wait to try it. I think Ellie really is pushing herself. I think she wants to get through so much to the semi-final and the pressure is on her. This is a really strong dish for me, and if I can do what I want to do with it, I think the judges will be amazed. I am doing quite a few technical things, so it could either make or break me. Seven minutes left, chefs. Start thinking about plating up soon. The pressure is immense. The chefs have all got their heads down. They are focused. They know this is serious. I love what they're doing in the kitchen today, and I love the energy in here. It's fantastic. Final touches. Cutting it fine, Ellie. That's it, time's up. Stop cooking. Mamma mia, look at that. You yeah. right? go. Beautiful. Ellie, bring your plate up. For her showstopper, Ellie has served Iberico pork two ways roasted rack, and cheek braised in five spice. Potato calaloni crisp, filled with smoked butter mash, hispy cabbage, charred button onions, roasted carrot, carrot puree, all finished with a five spice sauce. Ellie, a very clean, crisp presentation as always from you. A little small on the portion side, I may add. I'm just glad Greg's not here. <laughs> the pork cutlet that's just there, I quite like it, this pink, so you're quite lucky, OK? The cannelloni with the smoked potato mash is a delight to eat, the crunch and then the softness of the puree. It's a great plate of food from you, Ellie. Love the smokiness, love the braised cheek, and I really do like that pork chop. It's great, and a big sauce to go with it. One thing that is quite clear to see here is that you cooked it sat like that in the pan. The bottom of the meat is just a little bit on the dry side. There are a few little details, and that's what Monica and I are going to do. We're picking out the finer details now because this is the sharp yeah. end of the competition. Yeah. Thank you. 
the port could have done with an extra five minutes, but I'm happy overall. Gary has made his own black pudding and served it with King's scallops, shell-shaped potato scones, fennel, apple and chili salad, and apple caviar. For me, I think the scallops have been cooked wonderfully. They're sweet, they're still moist, they've got a lovely colour on the outside. The black pudding is delicious. It doesn't look great the way it's been served on the plate, but I love the flavours that you've got in there. The potato and oat crisps, I really like those. I don't think they look uh, great, but they do taste amazing. But then I find odd having a hot scallop with a cold salad. I like the dish. I, I do. I am so pleased you are doing something different and you're pushing yourself. I love the idea of picking up that little scone biscuit and just eating it like a cracker. It's a very nice, light, refreshing dish. Like you've got to work on your presentation, though, Gary. Okay? He's putting half your food on half the plate. Does not work. <laughs> Thank you. The presentation I think I'm always going to struggle with. At this stage in the competition you're not getting much chance to practice so you're really plating it for the first time so but I was happy overall with the positive feedback. Max has made a shepherd's pie using lamb neck along with seared lamb neck, baby onions, confit shallots, confit garlic puree and charred leeks finished with a minty lamb jus. I love the ideas of using the different types of onions and the garlic and puree um, and a shepherd's pie on the side with your neck end of lamb. Unfortunately for you, your neck end of lamb is not very tender at all. Even the shepherd's pie meat is a little bit on the coarse side. I love all the little onions, I love onions, I love spring onions and all types of onions and they work really well on this dish. Okay. Thank you. It's a shame the lamb cookery is not good here, uh, it should be the start on the plate. In saying that, you have started to refine your touch on the plate, you are starting to get mm. how your food should look. I thought it went okay, um, a bit disappointed with the meat cookery but um, I think the, the two judges can see that, that I am getting better, I'm taking my comments and I'm improving so all in all I was quite happy. James has cooked frustration which is roasted loin of venison with blackberries, purple potato croquettes, salt baked baby beetroots beetroot puree, pickled purple carrots, and a port and juniper jus. What do you think of the colour, Monica? Well, it's not all purple. True, 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 true. We have a white plate. I think this dish is just wrong. The pickling of the carrots is too big, it's too bold, it's too thick as well. The croquette looks nice, it's overshadowed by the acid on the plate. There's a lovely flavour of beetroot coming through though, which is really nice. The roasted beetroot, the beetroot puree, the sauce is nice. It could have a little bit more juniper in there though. I just don't think it's you at your best, James. For me, I like the cooking of the venison. It's how I would have it, lovely and pink as it is. It is a big portion though, James. The beetroot goes very well with the, with the venison. The pickling of the carrot is fine. There's just too much of it, yeah. okay? I don't think it's your best or your strongest plate of food, but there are things here that I've enjoyed. Thank you. Monica seemed Okay, but Marcus was a proper teardown. Proper teardown. <sighs> I 
that's probably just jeopardised me and being here, so. I don't know, really don't know, but it's not good, is it? Finally, it's Brenton with his take on a bomb Alaska. Italian meringue covering a chocolate dome filled with chocolate mousse and cherry sauce, along with a financier cake topped with cherry jelly, poached cherries and caramelised almonds. When you're going through the chocolate bomb, you're getting an amazing flavour of a, a lovely light meringue with almond essence, and you get the richness of the chocolate and then the beautiful fruitiness of the cherries coming through just underneath, a beautiful natural flavour. Great flavours, lovely textures. The chocolate dome just needed to be a little bit harder. But having said that, I like the dish a lot, Brenton, and I love the fact that you really drove yourself really hard. Very good, well done. Thank you very much, Marcus. Well done. <laughs> Brenton, I do like your dessert. Uh, you know, chocolate and cherries and marriage made in heaven. You've shown a lot on skill, really pushed yourself. Uh, there's so much that's on this plate, from the mousse to, to setting the jelly inside. You made the domes, the Italian meringue, the finanzia. You know, there's just so much work and a lot of effort to put this dessert together. Thank you. I'm happy with the amount of work that I put in. For a showstopper dish, I think it did have a bit of wow factor to it. Um, Neither of them said wow, well, but uh, I think they enjoyed it. A really great day in the kitchen, chefs. Great cook-off, great attention to detail. I know you all want to be in that semi-final round, but unfortunately we can only take four of you through. Marcus and I have got a lot to talk about. Take a break, we'll see you back here in a while. Another good day in the kitchen. Five very, very different plates of food from five very different chefs. They had a real battle in there today. It was fantastic to see. The energy was extraordinary. You could really feel it. This means so much to our chefs and they came in here and gave it their all. For me, of our five chefs, there's one chef that stood above the rest and that was Ali. Stunning looking plate and it tasted delicious. Very happy with Ali today. The pork cheek was delicious, beautifully presented, lovely sauce. She did a great job today. It's so hard work, but it's so exciting at the same time. It's a great experience. Brenton really impressed me today. I'm really loving the way this chef is developing and what he's turning into. It's great to see. The dome was delicious. The finantia cake was buttery. Loved the touch of the jelly on top. And then the almond and the caramel just brought a wonderful texture to the plate. This was very risky for Brenton today to take a dish like this with so much detail and skill, but he pulled it off. I've said from the very beginning I want to be through to the semi-finals. It's within reach. I'm so close to getting there. Gary is a chef in the competition. I've come to thoroughly enjoy watching work. The dish didn't quite come together as a whole for me, but there was a lot that I thoroughly enjoyed on this plate. I thought the black pudding tasted absolutely delicious. The scallops were beautifully cooked. The apples brought a freshness to this dish. I'd like to be in Gary's class if I was a young student. I'm having the time of my life. It's a terrifying environment, but I absolutely love being in there. I love being under that pressure. We've got to now decide between Max and James. Max has really honed in on his presentation of his dishes. I like the look of his dish. I thought his garnish was very well thought out his little shepherd's pie. He just needed another 10, 15 minutes of slow braising with the lamb. The neck end itself on the plate, oh, it was just too tough. The meat cookery let Max down today. That lamb neck that wasn't cooked properly ruined the presentation for him because it was a key piece of this dish. James's frustration dish. The venison, I liked the way it was cooked. The berries work well. I like the pickled purple carrots, but I just thought there was just too much of it on the plate. The, right, the Monica, the venison was well cooked. Um, I just couldn't see it through all the purple. 
I know there's more to come from James. If he can just get rid of this inner frustration and let himself go with some passion, who knows what this chef can do. Which one of these chefs deserves that place in the semi-final? I'm desperate to stay in. The whole competition has just been a dream. If I get through, well, I hope I do, because it's a really good dream and I want to stay in it, if possible. <laughs> I do feel like I'm halfway out the door, if I'm honest. But I've got to the final 10 of MasterChef and not a lot of people have really got the chance to say that. So if I go home today, I go home proud. Today you could really feel the tension in the kitchen and the fight for that place in the semi-final. You've made our job today very, very difficult. It's so obvious to see now how much this competition means to all of you. Unfortunately, one of you has got to leave us today. The chef that is leaving us is... Max. Thanks, Max. Thank you, Max. I'm gutted to be leaving, but I've just had such a great time and be fortunate enough to get this far. I'm very proud of myself. Congratulations, guys. You are semi-finalists. I thought I was going home after today. <sighs> I'm truly over the moon right now. I'm feeling uh, fantastic. And I'm so proud of myself for doing it. I'm speechless. It is such an exciting and hard competition to do. And for me to be in the semi-finalists, it's amazing. The last eight, you know, we've got to start seriously thinking about the possibility of winning MasterChef, which is, which is nuts. Um, but again, we've got a long way to go before we get to that. So a lot of cooking still to do. Next time, it's the semi-finals. The remaining eight chefs cook off against one another for the chance to work with some of the most inspirational chefs in the country. It looks a stunning plate of food. And that's probably one of the best sauces I've tasted in this competition. I'm welling up here, you big airy chefs. What's the matter with you? <laughs> <laughs>